Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is late. Um, I've been working on a project for the last few days and I guess like in a sense I've been working on this for a few weeks because I've been trying to pick up like kind of like a new skill in a sense. I've never been super good at like sewing or making like 3D objects. So I wanted to learn how to sew a little bit more because I wanted to make a chibi of or like a chibi plush of my OC Maseki. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys a few projects I've worked on prior to the preparation and then I'll show you guys Maseki and then I will go into kind of like snippets of footage that I took over the last I think two to three days of me trying to make Maseki. I think it's been three days, but let me show you guys what I've worked on. Kind of like in preparation okay so this is actually the first one that i actually made so i bought some cheap fabric off of amazon i believe and it came with like specific colors like i don't know eight colors or so and there's colors like yellow and green so i thought i'd make a pomodachi which is like pomo's little uh mascot character i guess um and i thought it'd be a good way for me to learn how to do sewing um and kind of like trying to make a template or a pattern for me to use so this is the first one it is a little bit janky it's also not a kind of like teardrop uh raindrop shape i guess it kind of looks like a pear if anything and it can sit so for me it works out uh, second, which is, I should have done this actually first, I made a little ditto really quickly and I'll explain like a little bit of the process for you guys in terms of how I did the stitching on the face when we get to Masaki's kind of like footage. Okay, and then the one that I did where I kind of had to do a little bit more planning in terms of doing the like pattern was actually the Jumpty Dumpty. Obviously it's not as round as the actual Jumpty Dumpty from Klee or like from Genshin, um, but I still think it turned out really cute. Um, I had to do a bunch of different things that I haven't done before and I think I learned how to do stitching a little bit more properly Obviously if you look really closely, there's like really poorly done stitching So yeah, made a jumpy dumpty as kind of like the final preparation for learning how to do a little bit more embroidery on the edges As well as doing like facial expressions and stuff like that really janky bottom, but I still think it's really cute um, and I actually really like this Jumpty Dumpty. I just had the right colors for it um, from this set that I had with these guys. So yeah, okay, so let's get into Maseki now that I have a little audience here. Uh, I'm gonna preface this saying that he looks really janky, so I apologize if he looks a little scary. Uh, but yeah, here he is. This is Masaki as like a little chibi. So I have him like in a little blue kind of hoodie just because I actually don't have his fabric for his clothes quite yet. So I'll get into that a little bit later. I ordered the fabric a little bit too late, but I really wanted to uh, make Masaki as soon as I could. Um, but yeah, I feel like I should have took more time to actually think about the whole process and how I should have done everything first. So yeah, here's Masaki. I just made a quick hoodie for him and I just used velcro to kind of like seal it. Um, so but this is what he looks like. You can see like the head shape and stuff is really off. Um, and we'll get into that and kind of like my little problems that I had in terms of like sewing him and my like, like I said like the lack of skill level for him so yeah he's a little... It's a little funky looking, especially his arms, his face is a little bit funky. The embroidery is not that well done, but you know, it's okay. I, I think, I don't know, something like this I think is like really fun as a project to learn like a skill. So yeah, and I think it'll be helpful in the future because like I will learn how to maybe sew clothes or something. And like I said, in the future, I will actually make proper clothes for him. I want to make his actual outfit. Um, like his sweater or turtleneck sweater and then his apron and stuff. I think it look really cute But for now, uh, he can have kind of like this little robe like hoodie for now in my janky sewing but You know, that's okay. So we'll get into the footage and I'll talk a bit a little bit more about the process Okay, I'm gonna be showing you guys like several different clips, like a whole bunch of clips of me just working on the actual plush himself, or of Maseki. And the reason why I even started doing like um, the plush 
is actually because I got recommended a video on YouTube of this person who went through like their entire process of hand sewing a kind of like chibi plush, like a K-pop chibi plush. And I, like, I don't know. I don't know if I, is this like overestimated how much time and probably like skill and precision you need to make something like this. But I thought like, oh, like, you know, if they can hand sew it, maybe I can too. Because like, I don't own a sewing machine. I actually don't know how to use a sewing machine or anything like that. Um, any sewing or stitching that I've done has always been like done by hand. Um, and I've never like took a class. I know like some people like in my middle school took like a fashion class and they actually learned how to sew or like, um, in my previous school when I was in elementary, like the junior high kids would actually get to make like pajamas in ninth grade and stuff, but I moved by then. So like I never had an opportunity to actually learn how to properly sew. So when I was learning how to do like embroidery and stuff, I learned like about like back stitching and all that, but there's like stitches that I didn't really know how to do in terms of making either fabric or for plushes and stuff. So like I said, in the beginning, um, I was using like the pomodachi, I used the ditto and the, um, what is it called? The jumpy dumpty kind of like practice runs on how to make a plush. So you guys can see I'm using my embroidery hoop and the kind of like translucent paper that kind of looks like wax paper or like, I don't know, tracing paper. So basically I think it's called like, is it embroidery stabilizer, I think. And I bought it off of Amazon. So the videos that I've watched that um, had people kind of doing embroidering the faces or embroidering the hair or any of like the little details tend to have like this film that they put on top of the fabric. Now the film that they have look like it's more transparent. It looks like like a clear plastic that has like an adhesive that they stick to the actual fabric and then they're able to draw on that said film and then embroider on top and then after that they either tear away or cut away the excess. So the version that I could find after doing some research on trying to figure out what the heck it was. So I think it is this embroidery stabilizers, but the one I have found is kind of more like a paper texture almost, but it's a little bit more firmer. Like if you try to tear it with your fingers, it's actually hard to tear um, unless you put like a full force on it, which is kind of nice because it won't tear while you're stitching, but um, it's a little bit finicky sometimes. And for me, when I was doing like the pomodachi, I think I did it, no, I did it with the film. I think all of them, I did it with the film. So that's why like for the ditto, I was able to place the eyes and the mouth in the correct place. Cause I would kind of sketch out and draw the faces, like, what is it called? The faces components? I don't know. For some reason I'm blanking on words right now. I'm like running on so little sleep right now. Um, or I believe these are also printable, so you can probably pop them into your printer and try to print out your design that you want, which probably would have been a good idea, but I was just tracing by hand. And in the beginning, I think I showed you guys the, the little pieces of paper that I had, which is kind of like my pattern or my template. So I just found a picture on Google images of a person's template. Now it was all in Chinese. I did do a Google translate to make sure that I knew what parts were which, but I'm not going to be posting the template for you guys to use only because I didn't follow the template that closely when I was actually making the pattern. I entirely scrapped the feet. Um, I believe I don't know if the face shape isn't like what exactly what I wanted or if I drew the face in a weird way, but there's like a lot of things that I feel like you can kind of benefit from if you actually do proper research or use bases or templates that people actually properly made. I don't know if this one was made correctly or made in a way that, I don't know, but like kind of like what is what you want, if that makes sense. I'll leave some videos in the description, um, kind of like the one that inspired me to do this and then I'll have two kind of like tutorial videos that I followed kind of like back and forth to make sure that I was kind of doing this in a right order if that makes sense because the template that I was using the feet did not make sense it had three weird shapes and one I could like or like two things I could understand is that the circle was the sole of the foot which made sense there's kind of like a half crescent moon ish kind of shape um or closer to like a half circle, but it's like a little bit more curved. So it's like a little bit more like a crescent. It's kind of like in between. And I could see that being like the top of the foot. But then this other piece, I did not understand how it could possibly be the leg if it was so tiny. And like I said, because there was no measurements or anything, I just made everything like up to the A4 size paper and see um, if that would work as a better size. 
um, before we get back into that, you can see how I'm doing the embroidery. So I bought like sewing thread and for the most part, I had the colors that I wanted to use for the eyes. Like when I was designing the eye pattern, I guess on Clip Studio Paint, I was trying to make sure that I had colors that would match from the sewing uh, thread kit that I bought from Walmart. Um, but later on, you're going to see that the stitching for the hair is going to go a little bit wild. Now, because I didn't do a lot of the stitching on camera, you're not going to see much of it, but you're going to see what I talk about, um, what it looks like and why it probably looks really messy looking compared to if you've seen other dolls, um, kind of stitched in a similar way. So yeah, but you can see how much, uh, thread this takes. It actually takes so many hours to make, um, but also doing embroidery or like stitching like this takes so long. So I've done embroidery before and I usually do things that have like larger shapes and kind of like one single color, but anything like this where you're stitching back and forth with only like um, a single thread kind of like just doubled back, it takes so long to fill an area. Usually when I do in like embroidery, it's a little bit thicker than sewing thread. And then usually I do two threads because I would split the threads from the six and only take two strands and then when I take two strands I would use that and it would be a little bit thicker so you can cover more surface area a lot faster and here's the hair so I was using the what's it called like the stabilizer is also the way for me to kind of um, use it for my template so that I would be able to mark out where the fabric is also for the template or like the one that I found so because I was following kind of two different tutorials I think one has more seam allowance now i didn't really give seam allowance to his face which is probably causing a problem because in the one video i watched i believe they i don't know if they, it's because they use more like felt and stuff they didn't really have that much seam allowance or they make smaller plushes so because they didn't leave seam allowance around uh, masaki's face i believe his gets a little bit more squashed um i'm looking at him right now and he actually doesn't look that bad, um, but there's like so many gripes I have. So yeah, and I, I don't know. So when I was doing the hair, so I think the one video showed it that they put the hair right underneath their uh, stabilizer. And I was trying to do that, but Masaki has bangs that come in between his eyes. And because I sewed where his eyes are on the stabilizer it was hard for me to insert the hair between his eyes so i was not able to do that so i just ripped off the stabilizer i cut away the excess and then i placed the hair on top like this um which might have been a problem but you know that's okay and you can see like where i stitched where his bangs are to attach it to the face it looks very messy now i'm not really super good at doing like embroidery in terms of keeping things consistent especially without the stabilizer because the stabilizer makes the stitching much more cleaner because it's kind of like flattening the fabric and you're kind of stitching on top and it kind of creates a surface that's a little bit more flat and easier to stitch on but as well as it has like outlines for me because like i made kind of like i don't know how many millimeters but like little spaces so that i was able to stitch back and forth at a consistent width but for this, I was not doing that. You can see it was like thick on the left and then on the right, it gets a lot thinner. And then later on, I started to stitch a little bit differently. So there's a lot of like inconsistency. If anything, I only like the hearts on his hair. So for the highlights or like little detailing, I put, I think three green hearts in his hair, two on the left and one on the right, just because I have a Zhongli plush and he has kind of like little diamonds in his hair and I thought that was looking really cute. I have two Wonu plushes as well from like 2016-ish time I believe and they don't have any highlights in their hair. Um, but yeah, I was trying to reference like all three just in case if I needed to figure out what was wrong with um, how I was stitching everything and I didn't realize so in the beginning you might have saw that the back of Masaki's skull is like gone. He has like a little bit of hair space but then once you get to like closer to where i guess his neck would be to the back of his head there's like no skull there it's like really flat so i definitely need to rework the pattern if i need to make a new one because i did not make it so that it looks round at the back which requires me to have a little bit more um, fabric but i also need to cut some slits and then fold them in and stitch them so that they can curve properly um hmm 
Oh, right. Talking about the hair. So, the I didn't really like the hair, how it looked. I think looking at Masaki, it looks okay. But if you compare it to other dolls, what they usually would do is you match the thread to the hair, like almost one to one. So for me, I chose a darker one because I only I have three dark browns, I believe, in my my thread. Um, sewing kit thing that I got from Walmart and I didn't realize it because I was stitching the hair not in the presence of my other dolls and I didn't realize that you know the stitching should be the same color because it looks a little bit more cleaner um, and a little less jarring so that's why Masaki's hair looks really messy um, besides like obviously my poor um, craftsmanship so yeah that's like something to keep in mind for the future now I'm just thinking like if I caught that prior, would it look a little bit neater? Because like the thing is, it's like I own a lot of embroidery thread, so I could have used that instead, in like in place of the sewing thread instead. So yeah, I think I would have been able to find a color that matches a little bit closer. So right now, I've taken Masaki off the embroidery hoop. I cut him out and the hair is kind of like the template for the rest of his skull on the front. I attach the chin part to the bottom of the face. And now I think I am attaching the ears. Now, when I was doing the Pomodachi plush, I did not understand how to sew ex extremities. I don't know how you explain these. Like the arms and legs with the body together so that you would stuff them as like one object so for the pomodachi and like pretty much the rest of the other uh well i guess like the jumpty dumpty i would actually stuff each individual part and then put them together the jumpty dumpty like the upper half and the lower half are all one piece but like the little stem part and the flower they're all separate so it's because like when you're sewing these you have to sew them like inside out just to make sure that all the seams are on the inside. So it's hard for me to remember like, oh, this has to be inside. You have to make sure the good side of the fabric are facing each other so that the bad part of the fabric or like the back part are facing away from each other so that you're stitching them. So when I was stitching like the ears, I was like, oh, do I have to stitch them with the ears inside where his face is? Or do I stitch them where they're on the outside? And then when I was watching people stitch like the legs, I was so confused. So we'll get into that a little bit. These are the ears. So I've seen people do this. You stitch them on the fabric and then cut them out after, which I think is really helpful just to keep them kind of even. So yeah, here's the other ear. Actually, what was I stitching before then? If these are the ears strange but yeah you can see like you usually have to flip them inside out so here's an ear here's the second ear now my regret about doing the ears is that one's longer than the other and i didn't notice when i was cutting it out so when i was sewing them onto his face like this um this is the shorter ear and then the ear where his piercing should be is the longer ear and it looks so weird um, but yeah, and then here's like how I'm kind of transferring my patterns to the fabric. I'm just using a ballpoint pen. I also don't own any fabric scissors. Didn't really know that really exists, but that makes sense because I've seen people cut easily into like different kind of fabrics with scissors and it's definitely not these scissors. So yeah. So at this point, I changed the pattern. I found a video where they were showing how to like sew legs and arms individually like up close so i was actually eyeballing the legs in terms of the template so i just randomly cut out a kind of like egg oval shape for the sole of the foot i was looking at the kind of horseshoe shape and then basically eyeballing that little shape to the oval so that I was just making sure the sizes look somewhat correct in their video compared to mine. And then after that, they have like this little rectangle that's like, I guess like, I don't know if it's like, um, like it's almost closer to like a rounded trapezoid on one side. And you would use that for like the back of the foot. And I would try my best to kind of eyeball that shape too in terms of size. And then I got two legs out of it, which is nice because the leg template, like I said earlier, did not make sense to me. Um, unless the foot was like itty bitty, like really like the size of your pinky thin, um, which is not what I want. I want Masaki to be able to stand if that was possible. So yeah, here I have all the body parts attached to the body. I have the front part of the face attached to the body as well. So now I'm just stuffing him with polyester polyfilling or whatever it's called. 
basically whatever you stuff like a lot of the plushies with and I'm trying to make sure I'm stuffing him like a fair amount so that he's a little bit more on the firmer side so if you have any of these kinds of dolls um or plushes from like manufacturers from group orders and stuff from like other people they're actually fairly firm so that's what I was trying my best to do and you can see he's coming He's coming to life a little bit and obviously you guys seen him in the beginning and I'm trying my best to like selectively fill each area because sometimes his chin on the right not the left side like the left side of the camera that chin part area or cheek um it kind of sinks and because it sinks um I was trying to make sure that I was stuffing a little bit more stuffing in there so that it doesn't like sink through if that makes sense I'm not sure if that makes sense. And then after that, I'm trying to make sure to keep all the stuffing within inside of his head. And then I'm doing, I believe this is called a ladder stitch to seal up um, the back of the head. Because I believe the ladder stitch is like one of those stitches that kind of hides your stitches because you're pulling it really tight and kind of like combining the fabrics to touch, which is kind of nice. And here he is. Um, you can see that I was having a bit of problem. His face was a little bit uneven where his chin was and then I needed to do the piercing on his ear But also his head like he would always face like upwards like look like he's looking at you and I didn't want that So I kind of wanted to you know even it out So I laddered stitched his chin to his body a little bit closer and then I did a little bit of uh sewing to do like the piercings which I used embroidery thread because I had a closer kind of like turquoise teal color for the piercing um but yeah and then for his little ahoge on his head i have a piece of wire inside of two pieces of fabric like glued together so that i could kind of manipulate how i wanted his little hair piece to move and i didn't show like the rest but i did a lot of like extra hair so the thing is like for the extra hair it looked a little bit too weird so i decided to not do that some dolls do have it and they look really great but i believe it's also because they stitch it within the skull as well and i didn't do that but yeah here's masaki i did his hoodie off screen for the most part but i wanted to show you a little bit of the progress and here he is um just trying to get him fit into this and this is what he looks like um i don't know if i'm gonna fix them later but hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i'll talk to you guys next time bye